your guide to the truth. The new American Media dot com. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Agree to Disagree here on the TNAM radio network here at the new AmericanMedia.com because the old American media has failed us. Seeking truth, challenging dogma, having fun. We encourage each and every one of you to join us in our mostly civil conversation. Invite your friends. Copy the links. Subscribe on YouTube. All of that jazz. On Twitter, on Facebook. The best place, go to thenewamericanmedia.com. And on the right-hand side is our button where you click play to listen live to this show whenever we decide to go live. When do we go live? Well... That just depends on when we can talk to certain people. Sometimes it's during the afternoon, sometimes it's in the evening, sometimes it's at night, sometimes it's in the morning, who the heck knows. But we share it all on social media so you can listen to that by clicking the TNAM radio button on thenewamericanmedia.com. It's on the right-hand side. Underneath that is our Twitter feed and our Facebook feed. So, I was invited last week. And who knows, maybe, maybe uh, maybe I'll obtain some video of my speech, but I was invited to go participate in this event. There's this man named Elvis Summers, at Elvis, S-U-M-M-E-R-S, at Elvis Summers on Twitter. Dude saw a problem in his uh, neighborhood, and uh, there was a homeless person that was living right around there, and uh, he decided to build a tiny home. Just so instead of like in the bushes and the dirt and the concrete and you know, outside, literally homeless, um, he built a tiny home. And so he started building a couple of these tiny homes to get people literally off the street. Um, and the city came and took them away. That'd be the city of Los Angeles. Now, you know, you could only imagine if you walked out your door and you saw a tiny home on your sidewalk or in your yard or parked right out front of your house. So, obviously, there were some people that didn't like the idea. Some viewed it as at least a step in the right direction. And uh, the city said, look, we got to take these things. So they impounded them, and that's where we are right now. My guest today saw this information and watched an interview that I did with Elvis Summers. You can check that out, uh, youtube.com slash the new American media. Click subscribe, leave your comments. Um, It's also on our homepage, the new American media.com. And I was talking with Elvis and I kind of recapped the speech that I gave that earlier that day on the steps of City Hall in Los Angeles. I said, um, you know, LA has damn near perfect camping weather 90% of the year. The Veterans Administration, or uh, so, what does A stand for? VA. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what A stands for. F and A, all right. Um, the VA has mismanaged 387 acres that was gifted to them um, to, for the sole and explicit use for grounds and facilities to help veterans of wars. Well, let's just say that... Uh, there was a movie studio storing their equipment there, their supplies. There was a rental car company that had a parking lot and was parking their cars on this property. <clears throat> I believe UCLA, you might have heard of that college, built a baseball stadium on that property. As if you're going to miss a baseball stadium. So we have a certain percentage, a numberable percentage, a significant and sad percentage of veterans from U.S. wars who are not getting cared for. We've seen the VA. They've had waiting lists. But guess what? The waiting lists were secret. They weren't even in the system. They were getting bonuses if they were hitting certain percent markers 
on servicing the veterans that needed assistance. These people were dying. They weren't being seen. Their names were on a month waiting lists that were just unconscionable, which is one of the main reasons why you don't want the government running your health care. Get away from all the politics of it. Look at the VA system and you tell me. Ask anyone you know that's a veteran. You ask them about the VA. Ask them how well it's doing, how well it's treating you. Go for it. Go for it. And so when, when I was asked to speak by uh, uh, Dean Ryan, and I got to know Elvis Summers and, um, of course, Adam Kokash, we've uh, hung out several times now, um, I, I just said, look, I understand where the homeowner is coming from. I get it. Um, I get Elvis. I understand what you're doing. You're, th that's a step better than that person sleeping on the street. I got it. I understand that the city can't allow this. I, I, I see it from every side. It's just terrible. So I said, since we have perfect camping weather, either pick a park and you put security and you, f you fence in an area and you put a bunch of tiny homes over there. You have a communal shower or, you know, I mean individual showers, but a little, you know, a portable facility for showers, for restroom, for, uh, you know, just, just a basic central location where you can maintain um, your health and cleanliness because that's a, an important issue go a day without showering and you'll remember why you do that every day <laughs> it's much better for you anyway let, let me just cut to the chase because I want to get to my guest but you know I said look there's parks and there's the VA 387 acres of mismanaged nonsense let's put one acre on the VA let's get a couple million dollars to build these tiny homes. I believe he's pay, paying uh, 2500 bucks a piece for them. And look, they look like little houses. You see the tiny house movement uh, all over on HGTV and all that, all that um, cable channels like that. Everybody's trying to downsize and get away from mortgage payments that lock you into a miserable life for 30 years. I mean, come on. So these are the tiniest of homes that you could imagine. It's really enough to lay down a little mattress. I don't know, maybe a twin mattress. It's like the size of a car. It takes up that imprint, some, something similar to that. But they have locking doors and windows with security alarms on them. And, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a safe place to sleep. How much safer would it be if you just <laughs> built like a little tiny home subdivision on an acre? You had roads. You had a little bit of privacy. You had security so nothing got out of control. And you're on the grounds of the VA. And you make this program, just this one program. Hopefully there's many more ideas. But you take this one program. And you bring in veterans because veterans make up a significant number of people who are living on the streets and they have access to VA care right next door. You know, they could even use the shower facilities in the locker room at UCLA. Because guess what? UCLA is trespassing on the veterans' land. I think the veterans will allow UCLA to continue if they play nice. That's how disgusting it is. That's how bad it is. That's how... <clears throat> That's what things can turn into. If, if you don't participate in the locality where you are, if you don't become active in making things work properly, mistakes and bad people doing bad things for the love of money can leave us with a system that doesn't serve pretty much anybody. And I think that's why you're seeing Bernie Sanders doing so well. I think that's why you're seeing Donald Trump do so well. People don't trust Democrats or Republicans. They don't trust Clintons. They don't trust Bushes. They don't trust Democrats. They don't trust Republicans. You know why? It's because we have the internet and you cannot lie to us as easily as you used to. That is the generation that we're living in. These are the times that we're alive right now. I, I, I just, I, I can't get the thought out of my head. I just always wonder, what would Ben Franklin be doing on Twitter right now? What would Thomas Paine be tweeting 140 characters or less. I've actually done a show about that. We did an um, all-time all -time top 10 Twitter troll team. Oh, my God. Did I just say that? Did I really get that? 
I'm not going to try it a second time. <laughs> anyway, that's in the archives. But the, the point is, with all of the assets that we have available to us, all of the resources that you have in the, <laughs> in the freaking palm of your hand, what are you doing about it? What are you doing with it? What's the game plan? The quote that I often reference is, activism is the rent we pay for living on planet Earth. I, I know I could look that up. Um, I would attribute it if it was on the tip of my tongue, but I've seen different versions of that. But activism is the rent that we pay for living on planet Earth. My guest today, um, how do you say this? She's living on planet Earth in a different country, and she found this story. And she started a petition and then specifically wrote an article based on my conversation with Elvis Summers. So Elvis did something and clicked a domino when he built the tiny, tiny homes. The city clicked a domino when they took him away. Another domino was clicked when Rose paid attention. Another domino was clicked when I got up there to say a few things, and I couldn't stop thinking about the stories I'd heard over the past couple years about the, the Los Angeles VA and what they've done to totally screw over the really the only people in this country. Aside from the, 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 the very physically and mentally disabled among us. The veterans, there is not a single thing that we should not do for those people that have been asked. To do horrific things. And we're not even taking care of them. So... Anyhow, what Rose is doing about it was she found this, she started a change.org petition, and then she saw our conversation, there's another angle, and she wrote a, just an amazing article, and I want her to kind of break it down because I'm alluding to just how bad things are at the VA, just wait till you hear the specifics on it. So, let's bring her in. Good morning. Hi, Brian. How's it going? I oh, think we great. have you. Great. There we are. How are you doing? Living the dream. I don't know if you have uh, the feed playing in the background, but if so. I did for a while. Yes, I did. I heard part of what you were saying. And uh, the VA is, stands for the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. And, um, I know. I always call it administration. It's some of these roll off the tongue, and other ones get tongue tied every time for me. Yeah. Well, I'm a writer, so I, I <laughs> had to say that. <laughs> Anyways, um, as you mentioned, actually, this all I did was research your uh, fantastic interview with Elvis, titled "Elvis Summers Built Tiny Homes Fights L.A." Um, after confiscation of his tiny homes and. Uh, you know, I just researched it and realized that, as you said, the tiny homes are just a step towards building someone back up. And at the eight minute mark, it just became so obvious that all he needs is land. Right. And you guys started talking about veteran affairs and what had happened and that Elvis had said there's enough land for all of the homeless veterans uh, in the entire county to be temporarily, okay, this is the emphasis, temporarily housed uh, in a tiny home. Now Elvis has spent like the greater part of a year building these things, working around the clock. The city takes them away, threatens to destroy them. He, he hasn't had a day off. You know, you know what else this man did? What's that? Humanitarian or what? He actually rigged up a shower so a homeless man that had his was put in a tent, was left in clothing had soiled himself. He's, Elvis went and rigged up a shower beside his, his apartment building so this man could get cleaned up. Elvis went and bought him clothes so he could, he could just, you know, basic human 
dignity, rights. Uh, to, to literally be picked up kind of at your, uh, one of the lowest moments you're experiencing. Exactly. And so there's been this huge backlash against what, what Elvis is doing. And the only conclusion I can come to is that it's based on money that the city of L.A. has somehow been getting to keep people homeless, which is an egregious thing to think of, really. Now, it was back in... Well, you know, you know, you know I think, I, you know, if I could just jump in there for, for yeah, a second. Yeah. Um, now, now you're, you're in Canada, you know, which is why yeah. I love this, because something yeah, Elvis... It's another country. <laughs> <laughs> it's this whole other country up north. <laughs> what is it? I can see Canada from my house, to paraphrase Sarah Palin about Russia. Anyway, um, you no, know, you're up there, and you, you brought up that point before. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Is there, is there money to be made by keeping people dependent upon the government? That has been leveled as a very significant, interesting uh, theory, accusation rather, probably accusation toward the, no, the actually, American uh, Democratic Party about trying to keep their voters dependent upon things that they're being given by those people in that party. And that's been a real accusation that's been going well, on. Why would we believe that the homeless situation is any different? Well, Loretta Lynch actually sent out a very stern warning um, as Attorney General to um, all, all city um, uh, councils that they not try to profit from the homeless. So uh, it's not related to your article, but it's in another... Um, uh, point I had made on my petition update. Yeah, tell so, everybody before we even get into this, let's tell them a few times if we can remember. Tell them where your petition is for people. I, I like getting these things out of the way in the, in the beginning, try to do, do it a second time in the middle, and then go again at the end to get people to actually do it. So what's the website? Where do they go? Okay, it's a change.org. It's been started by me, Rose Webster, just the way it sounds. And the petition title itself is Current Price reverse your order to confiscate and destroy tiny homes for LA's homeless. It's only been up for a month and initially I only petitioned Kern Price giving him a chance to redeem himself. And, and that, that first name because it is a unique name that's Curren C-U-R-R-E-N correct? Yep and Price P-R-I-C-E just what you think. Gotcha okay and so you gave it uh, as a chance to redeem himself you were saying? Yeah, so, but now I'm up to petitioning. Um, I, I am petitioning actually 18 people, including who you suggested. Um, uh, let me just see. I have. Yeah, the one that we suggested is uh, Herb Wesson. Yeah, Herb uh, I, 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 know, I know Herb Wesson. I, I don't know him well, but I, I, I have met him. Um, I, I do work with people on his team, and. It, some conversations have already occurred, a lot of back and forth and, um, you know, trying to find the time to schedule the meeting and then having a talk and then saying, all right, let's reconnect on Monday. Let me check into a few things. Um, so I am actively having a conversation with their office right now, and, and that's ahead of L.A. City Council. So um, yeah. anyhow, I just wanted He's to throw that out there while I was thinking about it. And, and I'm also petitioning the Secretary of uh, Veteran Affairs, Robert A. McDonald. UCLA Chancellor Jean Block and Attorney General of the United States Loretta Lynch, who I, I was mentioning, has uh, issued a stern warning that uh, government in various areas in the country not um, continue with the cycle of dehumanizing and criminalizing homeless people. Because you do not lose your constitutional rights just because you've lost your home. Now, confiscating someone's property, whether they deem it as trash or not, doesn't matter. That's their property. To take it away and to, is, is a crime. And to confiscate and destroy what was funded by citizen investors, not taxpayers, but Elvis had um, uh, funding come in from, from citizens probably all over the world. To take that away, confiscate, and, dis and I don't know if they've destroyed them, but is also criminal actually yeah so, there, there's a uh, lot there's a lot of conversation about the process same thing uh i don't know if you've if you followed that situation in oregon where it was um uh some members that were protesting and um 
got held up over there in Burns, Oregon, some of the mm-hmm. Bundy family from um, the Bundy Ranch situation in Las Vegas. But, you know, it, it's a similar situation. It's questionable tactics were used. Um, yeah. there, there's a lot of scrutiny over, okay, you're taking a call to meet yeah. with the sheriff. You've shown zero signs of aggression except words, and the words were basically about self-defense. You better stay away. Just just stay away for a little bit. And it's not a good situation, but it was an ambush, and they shot this guy and killed him. He came out with his hands up. you know. And we're trying to find the audio on the drone footage. Was he shot when his hand came down to where there might have been a pistol on the side of him? Was it suicide by cop, or was he already dead by the time he was reaching? So, you know, the, the, the questionable tactics are... are kind of at the core of a lot of these stories you know you asked where are these tiny homes i don't know uh maybe that information has come out but they may be in a warehouse somewhere they may have been destroyed i don't know well you know it was over two and a half years ago that federal judge james otero ruled that the department of veteran affairs violated federal law when it leased out, in fact, it was 11 businesses and organizations for purposes unrelated to providing medical care or treatment to the homeless and disabled veterans. Now, that land was deeded in um, 19, sorry, 1888. This is like World War I stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is post-Civil and, War uh, stuff. So taking over land that was deeded is now called enhanced use leases mm. enhanced use leases doesn't matter that is land that is was supposed to be designated for the homeless and as you you noticed in my um, March 21st petition update is I said look and, and you and I had this talk the land is there it was it was meant to be for the homeless disabled veterans the, the veterans are sitting out lying in the streets outside the fence of this VA property. Meanwhile, uh, everything they need is within within the compound. Now, this stadium, this baseball stadium, I would think just as I had said in my petition update, is that wouldn't it be just the most endearing thing is to have these tiny homes, which are on wheels, they can be moved wheeled in to share the space with the stadium. I'm sure they don't play baseball games 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I thought, I would think that the students, I gotta give the young people credit. I would think the students and staff would be on board for this, that they would um, feel good about it because I was once a former athlete and you know, I wouldn't feel right playing baseball games in that stadium knowing the ground I'm playing on is really meant for the homeless guy lying on the street outside the fence that is probably contemplating suicide. Mm-hmm. And as Elvis pointed out, out of 4,000 veterans, mm-hmm. about 1,000 of them are contemplating suicide. Yeah, I think you, you hear this the... is a crime against humanity. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. You hear Sorry, the story. You no, I was just going to say, you hear the stories of people. They're calling these suicide prevention hotlines that are set up for veterans with post traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. And the calls are going to voicemail. Oh God! There, there's no one answering it. There was a, there was a guy just did that and he killed himself shortly after. This just this just happened this month. I think even in the past couple of weeks. Real real uh, real recent case. People say, oh, that never happens. That just happened. I don't. You know, how many times can we attribute? I don't know, but I would say one is way too many. To to let something that damn important to go to voicemail. You're telling me there's not some sort of outsourcing you can do for minimum wage in the middle of the country to another veteran to always be on the other end of that damn phone and never let it go to a thing called voicemail? You think they wouldn't do it for free? You know, this government doesn't give a damn about the people that they're sending to go get mangled. I cannot stand it. I understand that some people can make a claim that sometimes war is necessary. I get that. I understand some people that say peace is the only answer. I understand that too. I'm not sure exactly where I where I lie on that scale from time to time, issue to issue. I think under different circumstances, a lot of people can justify force in a different way. But when you think about the fact that we are doing this to the people that we have stood up, like in the Hunger Games and volunteered, this is our uh, chosen son or daughter we're going to offer up for sport so we can wager money on it, we can sit back and be fat 
and laughing and smoking a cigar and drinking a scotch while the peasants kill themselves for our enter entertainment. I mean, for the love of God, is it really any different in reality? Well, and to come home and find out that the land that was meant for you, if you even got through the wars that you, you served the country for, to find out that there's like 11 businesses and the stadium on the grounds and you're left to just pretty much die in the street. And this was over two and a half years ago. There was even a suit filed in 2011 um, that actually, you know, it, it just turned into what was called a principles document. And what I found out is that it wasn't legally binding. So it was signed by VA Secretary Robert A. McDonald and Ronald L. Olson, who's the attorney for the plaintiffs, and they had made promises to ensure that employees that were assigned to the effort were highly competent and committed to achieving the goal of ending veteran homelessness in Greater LA by 2015. Well, since Garcetti's taken office, the homelessness situation has increased by 12%, actually. Uh, and then, um, the pro you know, the problem I have with my petition is trying to find VA Secretary um, Robert A. McDonald's uh, email. I had to jump through a lot of hoops to find that. So. Oh, yeah, the, the, the act of the investigative reporter. It's fun in 2016 with digital everything everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, I've had to be pretty crafty. And, and you know, the other... Uh, Elvis just recently uploaded um, one of these protesters at the, the rally, and I investigated her further. June uh, Richard, I believe, or Richard, I suppose Richard. And turns out uh, she was a resource specialist, not actually a special ed teacher. I saw her, her little Google Plus post of her video interview. Um, and then... Interestingly enough, Elvis had footage of her, her cursing um, a homeless person, and he caught it on footage. Now, the thing is, Elvis yeah, and, and it's and, and it's not just uh, you know something casual, some curses are slipping out. It's straight up uh, middle fingers and really oh, aggressive, like a pit, like an angry pit bull. Yeah. So, what's at the heart of their anger? I believe is the money train is being cut off. The visibility of the homeless people keeps taxpayers and money coming in. And here comes along Elvis Summers, and he has he has presented a viable solution to the homelessness problem that is doable, economically feasible. And he's only one guy. He's working around the clock with a team of volunteers. And um, the city of L.A. is threatened because now he's exposed that this can be done. You and I, and I'm sure, and he knew it long ago, is that the Veteran Affairs property was actually e deeded to the homeless disabled veterans in 1888. And so why is it, um, this is so doable. Let, let the students of, of UCLA share the space. Have these tiny homes brought in, they're on wheels, share the space, get to know each other, have the homeless veterans attend the baseball games. I mean, as you said to me and we discussed was, it doesn't make sense to tear down this big stadium at this point. The damage is done. But the point is, if you're leasing out this property, I don't care if you call it enhanced use leases, call it what you want, all that space was supposed to be for homeless, disabled veterans uh, who are make up about one in four of the homeless people in LA, which I was astounded to find out there was 44,000. This is why I'm petitioning Canadian, the Canadian Red Cross, St Stephen Dion, our foreign affairs minister, um, and Justin Trudeau, and the United Nations, although I'm not getting responses from them. I'm, I'm, and I'm finding how difficult it is to find out emails and get a hold of people. And uh, but Honestly, it can't. But, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. I was just saying, yeah. Rose, to to jump in there. That's the thing. Yeah. So basically, you're putting out the bat bat signal, asking, "Hey, can you help me gather some information on how to ca contact some of the most important people, become our crack research team, and leave some information in the comments section on the YouTube pages or wherever the, the everything happens to be on the petition, 
and let's start working together on this. You know, I get the city's point of view. I get that they don't want that in the sidewalk or in a parking space. I understand reasons for that. Okay, so please, for the love of God, try to tell me why we can't put one acre fenced in with, oh, with security and, and facilities where they can, where, where people can use the facilities, the restroom and the shower and whatnot. Yeah, there'll be showers in the stadium, right? Yeah, okay, so, so one acre. You're t tell me what's wrong with putting these homes on one acre of the VA. I, I, I challenge anyone to do that. I right. don't know that I could get an actual answer on that, but I think if you can't answer that question, I think everybody should pitch in a little bit and try to help this thing out with some manpower and sharing this, this message. Oh yeah, and I have signatures from all over the world, Sweden and New Zealand, Australia, the UK, Canada, um, of course the US, but I have signatures all, from all over the world and people are watching this. And uh, you know, the excuse that it's just a box, well this is nuts because they allow people to sleep in their cars. Meanwhile, Elvis Summers, actually, the homes are very nicely well built with eight vents. Meanwhile, if you sleep in your car, you know what you're exposed to? Fumes from oil and gas. So every argument they presented is just backwards. It can be disproven. And you, you connect the dots with some of these people, which I have, and I'm not afraid to do, by the way. Um, it just comes down to money that the city has kept on collecting from taxpayers by the way the homes didn't cost taxpayers money the tiny homes yeah well you, you know what they investment. just they just had a huge investment in trying to figure out ways to solve the homeless problem what was it a hundred million dollars just got specifically <laughs> earmarked all right what we would be How doing this for the money? the price of a temporary fence and two security guards that are probably VA employees that you can kick minimum wage to get the ball rolling while we figure this thing out. Just something temporary, you know? I mean, the most basic level, you set this thing up as rudimentary as you could imagine and make the rest tent city and reach out to Coleman Company and see if they'll donate, you know, 300 tents. I'll bet you they will. <laughs> you know, it's, it's what better way to advertise? And, you know, there's no answer they have. Years, yeah. They have no legitimate answer why they wouldn't try this project. No legitimate answer. So, you know, down the rabbit hole we go with, with the other theories. You just got to kind of think about it. Um, I want to get back to your article, Rose. Uh, re real quick, um, give me the uh, location of your petition one more time. Okay, it's change.org. Um, and it's you just can uh, use Rose Webster and the first part of it is current price reverse your order to confiscate and destroy tiny homes for LA's homeless and I hope you don't mind Brian if I use this um, little interview we've done here on another petition update I, I would mind if you didn't use it oh okay, okay. <laughs> No, absolutely. I, and that that's the point. We're here to connect. We're here to yeah. team up and we're multiplying our efforts. Well, you know, I've, I've heard it said so many times. That, um, it's not a well-known phrase, but to me, I could never get the image out of my head. Um, but, you know, one person with a bucket is going to have a long time in front of them before they could empty a swimming pool. You know, but if you, if you show up with a thousand people and you get a conveyor belt and everybody grabs a bucket and passes it one step to the right, it's not going to take very long to empty an entire swimming pool if everybody's on the same team and working together. So yes, uh, uh, it would be my pleasure to do that, and I would be insulted if you did not use it. So please, yes, share that everywhere. Oh, use it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so use it. You no. Yeah, use it everywhere. S multiply that oh, message no, as much as possible. Yep, sure thing. That that works fine. Um, I want to say one thing. I, I oh, I'm cutting. We're cutting out here. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe this you is there? doing. Oh, yeah, I'm here, but you're cutting out. You there? Hang on. You know what? I'm gonna disconnect and come right back. I'll come right back oh, to you. Yeah. yeah, you know, technology does that sometimes. But man, it was so cool. I, I when I come back with Rose, I want her to kind of just maybe walk point by point through this article that she wrote. Um, that was inspired by the conversation that Elvis and I had. Um, Elvis Summers, of course, on Twitter, at Elvis Summers, S-U-M-M-E-R-S. -M -M -E He's building the houses, um, the tiny tiny homes for the poor, tiny houses for the poor. And let's see if we can get her back in. But 
I actually had a theory about what, what could be done with that stadium, too. Hey, okay. I'm back. How you doing? Well, hi, sorry about that. No, it's all right. It's Skype. That's why I try not to use it, except uh, you're up yonder. You're, you're in maple syrup country. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I love Canada. It's such a cool place. I went to the CN Tower when I was a boy. I did, what was that, Toronto. I did the Niagara Falls, been up through Windsor. Countless, countless, countless times go to, like, jazz bars and go to the casino and the oh, duty-free yeah. shop. Yeah. Everything over there. And I uh, just had a nice visit in Vancouver. Canada's awesome. It's such a neat place. And it's so yeah. interesting that you guys stay out of so much crap. You know, Canada's there, but it's not really... You know, you think about the difference between if, if these were neighborhood children, the different yeah. the different countries on our planet. I wonder how people would look at the neighborhood children that is the United States. How do you guys look at the, the U.S., by the way, Ooh. with our, our politics and our uh, foreign affairs and our media? What is an outsider's take on what you see going on in this place? Well, uh, as, as somebody that does a lot of online research, uh, mostly health-related stuff, um, what I don't like about U.S. media is it's very sensationalized, and it seems that it doesn't present all the sides. So I do think uh, services like yours, like alternative media, like the new American media, is, is crucial that people use that because... Um, I just don't feel there's enough factual um, reporting. You know, you flip around to different channels, and, and the news anchors are pretty much saying something that sounds exactly the same. And right. you see that with John Stewart, and when he was on, you know, he would take clips, and other comedians, I'm sure, do that too, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the way, the, the problem I have is, is this, that there was a humanitarian crisis going on, and it's been swept under the rug for about five years. And I did petition uh, the spokesperson for the U.S. branch of the Red Cross. No response. So I decided to have the Canadian Red Cross because they say wherever it is in the world, if there's a humanitarian crisis, we'll be there. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> well, let's try that again. Maybe we got a snowstorm or something. Hmm. Or maybe there's foul play afoot. <laughs> Hi. They're never going to silence us, no matter what you do. We're going to keep on talking. Well, the Canadians are watching this. We're going to... I don't see why we can't send in our Canadian Red right Cross to help. I mean, yeah. we have in other areas of the world. What do you think? It's, it's a problem, and it's not just a problem. It's a very, very, very big, significant, disgusting, uh, just, just depressing situation going on. And it's literally right here in our yard. It's not our backyard even. It's our yard. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's within our home, our outstretched arms of where we can reach and, and keep each other under the same umbrella through country and civility and you know, customs and styles and camaraderie, and we're allowing this to happen, and it's it's so weird. You know, the thing you brought up, Rose, um, you were talking about how cool it would be to get the veterans at, at the UCLA baseball stadium. You know, I just envision, because I'm a big sports fan, I envision, I actually do a sports radio show as well called The Unhappy Hour, if you want to check it out. Anyway, uh, but, yeah, but I could imagine a section of the, the baseball stadium, maybe the outfield, a bleacher section, totally roped in with we are the wild and crazy u.s veterans sports fans or ucla you brand it something and like like you make a whole section just nothing is an honor and a service and a thank you so much and i'm and i'm so sorry and all the legitimate feelings reason reasonable people are going to have i'm so sorry 
or thank you so much or a combination of that and several other emotions and make it something good instead of having it be something bad. Give people something to do. They could work the concession stands. Think of all down the line, all the things. It's already there. Let's think. Let's do something. And I want to know that the VA is going to send a representative to me that's going to listen. I don't know if it's a congressman. I don't know if it's somebody from Washington, D.C. I don't know if it's going to be somebody local. Um, we're working on that. Uh, Herb Wesson's office, he's the president of the L.A. City Council. I, I am I am having conversations with his team in a very respectful way. That's the way I've tried to approach this situation from the beginning, with the utmost respect, seeing both sides eye to eye. I just want to put some heads in a room and see if we're open to trying some of these ideas. And the real only answer is yes, but I, I, I we have to facilitate that, you know. So that that's where we're going there. But I I don't see a reason why we couldn't come up with an idea like that where they work the concession stands and are, they're honored before every game. And think of the, uh, the singing the 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 national anthem and raising the flag and giving them something to do all the time. I could just you know it it works so well in my mind's eye like it's already there like we've already done it. It's well, like it's. And Elvis said they paid their ticket. Isn't it like the least we could do? Really? Uh, you know, isn't it the least we could do for the homeless, disabled veterans that fought for our freedoms? And let's not kid ourselves in Canada here. Uh, having the Americans as our neighbors protects our country, too. That's true. And let's not let's not forget that. Yeah, I mean, um, you, so how, how do Canadians feel? There was a great, <clears throat> there was a great joke by, uh, I don't know if you know Ford Fisher, but he's an up-and-coming journalist with an outfit called News to Share, News the number two share. Uh, he's been on our program a few times, but <clears throat> he asked a question. It was just, you know what? I want to. I just want to find it. I don't want to butcher it, but he asked. I, I believe it was your new prime minister. What's it? Justin Trude Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Yeah, um, that shows how much I pay time. But I did get his name right, actually. Um, the new guy, Justin Trudeau, and so uh, Ford Fisher asks him at an event, I think it was uh, at a university on the East Coast, and he said, well, you know, a lot of people in America say that if Donald Trump is elected, they're going to move to Canada. And he said, so how would you address the humanitarian crisis of uh, American refugees fleeing America through Canada's southern border? It was hilarious because it worked in the, the border issue that Trump's pushing versus everybody say, I'm going to Canada if that guy gets in. All right, now you got a humanitarian crisis of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people fleeing into the southern border of Canada. It was really funny. It was really good. I hope I did it justice explaining it. Um, but, yeah, you, you said having us there as a neighbor uh, protects you, and I could totally understand that. We have millions of people j jumping across our border, and we just we don't know who any of them are. We don't know what the – well, we know that there's many purposes that are running drugs and running guns and, and, and f female uh, – well, there's sex trade stuff. There, there's just bad stuff that's happening, and it's just kind of happening. How do Canadians look at America's southern border immigration issue, since you kind of brought up having us to your south, is, is, does provide some protection? Oh, gosh. Like, I avoid politics like the play. <laughs> <laughs> I re and religion, to tell you the truth. But um, <laughs> I, I think the thing is, though, if you were to multiply Canada's population by 10, you'd see probably the same ratio of problems here. It's just that we're, you know, one-tenth the population. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, you know, in pockets of Toronto, we have our own skid row type areas. We, you know, let's face it, we had Paul Bernardo and, and Carla Fomolka, who had a a regular sized house that the LA Council would have approved of, right? Committed their crimes using cars, abducting teens. So, you know, the whole argument that tiny homes is going to bring in uh, crime is just absolutely nonsense. When people are given a piece of property, it's shown that they will respect it and want to keep the area around it better. But if you keep stealing from people who have nothing, um, what are they going to do to survive? After a few days on the street, they have no food, nothing. No, people are kicking them out of every, every place they go. Um, you know, after a few months on the street, I can see why people would want to turn to drugs. Sure, survival, you got to eat. Um, this all comes down to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And now I know I'm, I'm getting off topic here because I'm not well versed in, in, in politics. 
But the way I think the world and people in Sweden and other places in the country look at this as it's a human basic need. Um, you cannot achieve independence until you have all your physiological needs met. And then you have to feel safe in your environment, which includes a locked door, right? How many of us could sleep without locking our door at night? This is why tents are just nonsense. People get things stolen out of their tents. And then uh, three is belongingness. So this idea to ship people off to farms to work and earn a little income and so on that are homeless, um, they need to belong to the community and feel welcome. It, 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 it's a violation of the uh, Declaration of Human Rights, in fact, to send people into exile. Being homeless doesn't mean you're criminal. So um, to achieve, you know, the step four on Ma Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I mean, I've said this many times, we stand on the shoulders of giants. So if you understand the, that hierarchy of needs, you realize that people can't gain independence until they have their basic physical needs met, safety needs met, and, and then belongingness. So from the, the standpoint that I come from, which is pretty much just health and ethics, not politics or religion, and I don't want to cut you off, but I'm not the best person to comment on the political situation in the U.S. I just, I would be misrepresenting Canadians that are well informed. No, that's, no, it's, it's more of <laughs> your view as a neighbor. Instead of, instead of specific policy, of course. I, I, you know, I barely even knew Justin Trudeau's name. I had to double check that I didn't butcher that. You know, I barely pay attention, and I pay attention to a lot of, <laughs> a lot of geopolitical situations across the globe. You know, but I guess that was probably more intended, a little bit more general than it might have come out. You know, um, okay, because you know, just as a neighbor, the guy, you know, you, you, oh hi, hey, how's it going? You see each other when you're getting your mail or something. You, you know, you, you see their place from a different perspective is all. Well, I think it's nuts to want to build a, a barrier and to, to segregate people. Um, the segregation and dehumanization and, and, and let's keep Latinos here and keep other people here. Like, this is so backwards. Um, and there's been the, the other thing that really upset me was, was seeing, seemingly the war on women in the U.S. Um, and it's like all the effort we've made over so many years to just equalize things, just to equalize things. We're all members of the human race. So my commentary is, you want my commentary? I don't like Trump. I like Bernie Sanders. Now this, please, you know, I'm a Canadian, so don't get on me, but I like the sounds of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I'm, Bernie. Not, I'm not generally that type of interviewer. I'm not generally that type of conversation. I, th I, think, I think most of the time, as long as the other person is approaching me from a respectful point of view, I, I love conversations about things that I don't agree with, as long as we can keep it both mostly civil. So don't worry, I'm not going to jump down your throat about any of that stuff. Yeah. No, I meant like anyone watching this. <laughs> well, but you know what? I'm encouraging those people that are watching it to actually consume the information in the same manner. Act like an adult. Are you over 18? Act like an adult. You don't need to cyber bully. You don't need to act like a clown. You don't need to push your agenda with violence. You need to act like an adult and use your words. That's what they say in a lot of special needs classes to the children that are acting out and instead of speaking words and they say use your words don't use your fists you're, yeah. you're you're getting upset so tell us what's happening so we can try to help you don't punch him or don't push that over don't break that um you know so anyhow that's all i'm saying <laughs> well um uh, was that enough of an answer for you works for me i wanted i wanted because you kind of went through a couple of first bullet points in that wonderful article you wrote by the way where can people find that article that you wrote now you know what i'm gonna have to put it on, on my website too um well, it's been a busy week i haven't uh done the update but i will have to put your article back um we'll feature it on our site so that the oh, people can okay. have a good well, look but in, in the I, meantime where can they see it well it's a petition update it's called elvis needs land Come on, VA and UCLA, we can do this. And Rose Webster, it's a change.org petition update, actually. And what kind of points? I know you, you addressed some of these paragraphs, but I read it and it was so, really, I thought it was a fantastic article. First off, thank you for writing it. I probably should have led with, that was a great article. It was, it, it, it was impressive because 
j just like you said, I have a few emails, but I, it's tough to find some of these. Maybe someone else can help. You know, I put a basic uh, rough draft out there, and you really turned it into something. You know, it, it was, uh, you know, like a blank coloring book, and you really filled in the spaces. So um, as much of that as you wanted to kind of buzz through real quick, I want people to kind of soak in and uh, kind of absorb some of the main points that you got to in, in this uh, update on the change.org petition because it was really thorough and really well done. Well, gee, thanks. Um, well, the points were that uh, I learned that Jackie Robinson Stadium uh, was illegally built on, on Veteran Affairs property and that uh, VA Secretary Robert McDonald signed a deal that allows them to keep the stadium on that property for at least another decade. And this was kind of done behind doors without the veterans knowing about it first up. Granted, they paid for a lot of things for veteran affair, for veterans, uh, medical services, et cetera, et cetera. My point is that no matter what they call it, that this enhanced use leases is still just taking land away from people that it was meant for. Uh, five years ago, Valenti versus Shinseki was uh, a f was filed a suit um, that was filed and and it was later found that um, that indeed that uh, the judge had ruled that Veteran Affairs misused land designated for the homeless veterans that was Judge James O'Terry. Uh, so there was a principal's document. It wasn't legally binding. Now this is key because I think this is where the city of LA is just bullying over everybody here. They were to uh, assign employees that were highly competent, obviously not. <laughs> obviously. End, yeah, obviously, to end veteran homelessness by 2015. Mm. So last year, right? Yeah. And that was signed and dated by VA Secretary Robert A. McDonald, who was almost impossible to find the email for, and by Ronald L. Olson, who was the, the attorney at representing people. Um, and when I, when I looked it up, there's actually a website, there's 11,311 homeless veterans in California alone, which is just astounding. Um, and uh, I found out that LA Mayor Eric Garcetti, he claimed that this year, this was in 2016, January 28th, this year with the vital support of Secretary Robert A. McDonald, the VA, and our nonprofit partners, we will end chronic veteran homelessness once and for all. Well, this is, uh, we need to, what I feel, and I, I'm sure you and Elvis have, have figured this out, is that we need to demand that this land that was used for the baseball complex be either given back. Even better, better solution would be have the UL, the UCLA students and athletes sharing the, share the space with the homeless veterans. Because I think, seriously, this is the least we can do. And I just, I'm really just hoping is. your connections with Herb Wesson can, you know, follow through on this. And well, we hey, can... you know what? It, this stuff, I have, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I said in my, my intro that, you know, you got to act locally. If, if, if yeah. uh, what, did, what did Plato say? Indifference to public affairs is giving a sanction to being ruled by inferior men. You know, so if, if, if you don't give a damn, guess what you're going to get? It ain't going to be good because they're taking it all. That's really all it comes down to, which is why the American system, we at least some of us still love it, because it's supposed to protect you from shady politicians doing shady politician things. Um, but yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've been involved locally on several different occasions for different reasons at the different places I've lived. And, you know, I, I've had good interactions with Herb Wesson's office, uh, Kimani Black. He's, he's the, the gentleman that, that I speak with. He's, he's always been professional. He helps out with, with various issues. Um, he's a good guy. You know, I'm, I'm trying my damnedest over here, and I'm trying to do it as professionally, as politely, as, as um, you know, it's still energetic, but, you know, coming from it as a point where we're not going to come in uh, yelling curse words and uh, making accusations. I'm just saying, look, okay, there's a bunch of things that happened in the past, and I don't want to talk about how we ended up here. We're here right now today, 
and I have an idea, and I really can't think of a single bad thing about it. I'm thinking maybe you could come up with like one or two bad reasons for our 300 good reasons. Let's have a chat. You know, so I'm just trying to be optimistic with it. You know, no promises. I'm not guaranteeing a thing, except um, I'm going to continue. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna remain on top of this. We could say, yeah. kind of like uh, in Shawshank Redemption, where he's writing, uh, writing the government for books and books, and nope, they never get anything. So he writes one a week, and then it goes to one a day, and they finally get so sick of hearing from this guy after years and years in prison. They show up with like ten thousand books. And, and a whole bunch of funds to build a library. It's, you know, you, you just don't stop things like this. You just keep going every day, one foot in front of the other. You don't give up, but you also remain polite and professional in the process, and that's at least what I'm trying to do. Because I know some people get fired up, and it kind of comes off the wrong way, you yeah, know? Sure. I've never insulted anybody that's been dashing me, and I've been very bullied and dashed online. Um, as people who follow me will, will soon discover and uh, who get to see some of my posts and people that were set up in the San Pedro Homelessness Task Force, they seem to be a group that uh, just goes all out to bully and bash and call names and, and say horrible things. So um, I'm just, I'm floored because the only reason for their anger has got to be it's a threat to them and probably it's cuts off their money supply in well, some well, way. Well, I, I, I know from the homeowner side, I can understand that and appreciate. Uh, yeah. There's something we call NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y, not in my backyard. Go, yeah, let's get nuclear power. That'll be great. Let's get nuclear power. Well, not in my backyard. Don't put it, no, put it down in the southern part of the state where it's far enough away in case there's a meltdown. No, I, I want to benefit from it, but I don't want to actually have it in my backyard. So I can understand legitimate members of law enforcement and legitimate members of the, the, the community in general who don't want these things on the sidewalks or the streets or the parking spaces. I get it, but what, what, what you're getting at is then the more sinister version if this is really all a... Uh, you know, a cabal effort to keep as much money flowing into the right places and out of the other places for political purposes, power and control, then yeah, it takes on a very super sinister kind of connotation, doesn't it? Well, if there is land that was deeded to the homeless disabled veterans that this baseball stadium was illegally built on, on veteran affairs property, then where is the excuse? This is, there is no excuse to not put tiny homes, the, the tiny homes are on wheels so they can be moved. Yeah, just as a temporary thing while you renovate other facilities on this campus to house the veterans or the, as needed. And you're yeah. gonna keep building buildings, you're gonna keep building facilities until the, ho the homeless veterans are taken care of. So they can always temporarily stay here. As your reminder, they should be lined up on the main road into the place. So every day, the employees have to drive past the homeless shanty town and realize, this is why I'm going to work today. This is why I need my contractors to hustle and build that foundation so we can get the next batch of buildings up to get them off of the street. You know, th that's what needs to be happening here. That would really just, for me, I can already see that as well. Well, and I think if the UCLA students and staff knew the whole truth, I don't know how much people down there know, I think they'd all feel very good about I got it. it. Hey, let's do this. L let's um, bring them on. No, yeah. let's, do, let's do the next rally at the campus of UCLA to coincide with baseball season because yeah. baseball season is coming up. And we should have the next rally instead of at City Hall right at the baseball game. But not to disrupt the game. Let's not be jerks and idiots. Like, then people don't like you. You know, hey, protesters, if you go there to mess with people, they're not going to like you. But if you go there on UCLA's campus at the facility, then you would have the opportunity to hold an event and say your piece and educate the students, invite their school newspaper up, invite, invite ESPN2 up, who happens to be there covering a baseball game. Whatever the case may be, invite everybody in and have a nice press conference, have a well-organized attempt to educate UCLA. Look what the people have done on this campus. I'm sure you've heard stories. Maybe you've investigated. Maybe you haven't, but here you go. Here it is. Yeah. And um, see what happens after that. Tell me if the national media wouldn't be forced to pick it up. That's what I think we should do next. I think that's brilliant, Brian. But I don't want to organize it, though. I just want to come up with the idea and walk away from it. 
And that's what you did so well. Let's I had that it. I Let's had that idea with Elvis and I walked away from it and you did something with it. That was very good. Well, it's the least I can do for my little igloo. <laughs> well, um, w was there any other po main point you wanted to get at in, in the at the rest of that that petition as you updated it? Because it was just it was so damning by the end. I just kept scrolling and scrolling and reading and reading, and going, man, I knew it was bad, but seeing it all together in this place, the way it's laid out, I mean, it just a damning court case. Well, I I researched it for myself because of what I think that the general public does is they look at all this and they say, okay. Here's a regular guy. Maybe he's exaggerating a little. But when I researched it, I realized these um, violations have gone back more than five years. <laughs> and the homelessness situation has increased 12% since Garcetti took office. So there's no, there's no exaggeration. And, and I'm shocked, just as researching, just as the last couple months, well, I'd say six weeks, I followed Elvis since... I first found out about what he was doing through Global News, like May of 2015. So, uh, you know, the world is following us. And the thing is, what we need, okay, you don't have to donate, but we need signatures because it's when tens of thousands of signatures go in these people's uh, mailboxes, it's impossible to ignore. And petitions get one. Um, and, you know, I've ha even had some of these. Uh, LA Council uh, bullies say to me, your, your, your petition's finished, it's stalled. Well, it's only been up for like four weeks. Most petitions take months. But what the point I want to make to people is that you do this research on your own. I link to the actual principal's document that's signed and dated by the VA secretary. Uh, I did the research, you can double check it all. And I thank you for complimenting me. I wrote, I wrote it with a migraine, actually. So Wait, you wrote, you wrote it what? I had a migraine when I wrote that, so I didn't think it was that good. But, uh, <laughs> you got to get migraines more often. You know what? That, that's the feel. like when people, basketball players say they were in the zone, when Michael Jordan, he's like, everything was moving slow motion and I was at full speed. It, that, when you get into the competitive zone, that happens. Maybe that's the feeling you get when you write a good article. You, you get into the migraine zone. It feels like a migraine, but you're actually writing a good piece. <laughs> well, thank you. And I write the best when I'm angry, although I'm trying to be – like a wannabe comedian half the time because I have to balance it somehow. Yeah, I, I, I say on our site, seeking truth, challenging dogma, enjoy the mostly civil conversation. You know, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, seeking truth, challenging dogma, and having fun. And you got to have that fun component in there or else, you know, it, you really will let the weight of the world get you down. It, it really can be all-encompassing. You got to have a balance, you know. The, the, a lot of famous teachers over a lot of millennia have always said it's very important to have some sort of a balance, whether that's um, always take Sunday off and rest and recuperate and take care of yourself, or uh, divide your day into three equal portions and, you know, do things to whatever the case may be. Teachers have said that for a long time, but yeah, especially activists, you can really end up in an angry place if you allow it to go there. But I always found that with my band. Um, when when I would end up from instead of being the drummer when I was the singer, I always found that I was able to write songs when I was upset, when I was angry, when I was frustrated. I could get those emotions out, and it's it's always been easy for me to articulate those. But then it's probably a heck of a lot different, I would say, to let out the emotions of love for whatever reason. So it's, it's an interesting <laughs> thing. But I always wrote when I was angry. That was the the quote you just said, and it got me thinking because I I definitely agree with that. Well, I think when we're in a happy place, it's hard to just kind of get worked up and articulate our our feelings. I my best writing is when I'm angry. <laughs> so I wish it weren't the case. But well, it um, goes back to that thing I was saying earlier. Use your words. Yeah. Hold on. Use your words, not your violence. Use your words. And, you know, you're, you're <laughs> really angry, so you're using your words. Um, no, but, I mean, that is what this is all about at the New American Media. It's about, you know, and, and it's about the New Canadian Media. <laughs> oh, are we doing that? 
<laughs> yeah, there, there actually is a 10-year plan to become the largest media company on the earth. But uh, oh, we're okay. only in year five of the beta test. So I, I think uh, le with leaps and bounds, you're going to start to see some things happening here. But uh, no, I mean, that is the, the new media. That is the new American media and the new global media. It's out there. And when someone sees a story, they put their own piece together. They do their own research. And it's like, hey, I don't care if CBS isn't covering this tonight. Guess what? Yeah. I'm the 6 o'clock news. I'm covering this tonight. And you need to check this out and share it because if you're into these types of stories, the mm -hmm. things that really make you grit your fist together. I don't know if you saw the movie, uh, was that 13 Hours about Benghazi? Oh, man, I was just, I was so upset watching it the whole time. Just so, ugh, you know, but, but when we, we start getting into that and we see stories that, that affect us on that level, it's pretty easy to then take it and do something constructive with it and put it in the form of a video or an article or a speech and these things do start to multiply and we don't need corporate controlled media feeding us propaganda anymore we've kind of tuned them out because we know in between their commercials they're just more commercials for war and other ways to just take your money and i i love capitalism um, but but you have to be a smart user of capitalism because it can really sink its teeth into you like a drug, um, which kind of will wrap this all up, kind of how we were saying political parties have been accused of getting people addicted to handouts and, and payments and free um, things, you know, handouts for votes, and you, you keep them perpetually down there so you can always point at the other party and say, they're the bad guys, they're taking your money. And you go, hold on a second, as an outside observer, you look at that, that group of politicians and you say, you know, you really need to work, if you love these people, you need to work to educate them about wonderful choices and how bad choices can negatively impact their life and kind of give them support and guidance as they make it through this world. Maybe not per perpetually keep them down there like second class citizens for your political pleasure you know maybe that would be a better way so i mean it's complex but it, on, a, on a human level it's it's really just man trying to control man it's it's really just the most basic thing so um rose the, once again thank you for for putting out the article i'll give you the last uh, minute here to kind of any overview how you'd kind of like to sum this up uh, if you had to bookend this and turn into a bumper sticker or a Twitter f post of 140 characters or a paragraph or two. Um, wrap it up and then tell everybody where they can stay in touch with you moving forward. Okay, um, you can stay in touch with me. Rose writes a blog for the underdog or Rose Webster on Facebook. I'm Rose Webster on the change.org petition. I check every single uh, comment. I like every comment. I check every single one. So. Anybody trying to get a hold of me through the change.org petition for current price, you'll find me there. I check it all the time. Um, I'm not on Twitter, but you find me on Facebook. You find me on, on YouTube. I have a channel that's mostly um, comedic stuff, which is, you know, we have to be funny because we're comedian here. So uh, if I had to wrap it up, I would say this. We have to look at what the public officials that we've elected, whether Canada or U.S., doesn't matter. They represent us. When citizens invest in a way to solve a problem, the government has no right to change laws, confiscate and destroy citizen investment. So we need to hold them accountable. When they took the land from Veteran Affairs and repurposed it or whatever, that was wrong. So the point I'm at right now, let's make this right. We have one guy starting a movement, Elvis Summers. We have you, Brian Engelman, pushing things along. Dean Ryan, who I barely gave him a chance to talk in my interview with him. Uh, we have Marisol Medina, and I just love her. We have a whole team of people working on this, and the world is watching. So there's no excuse. The VA land, we've got to get that going. Um, Herb Wesson, I hope you're following this and up with Brian Engelman. And uh, let's do this. No excuses. We don't need five more years or two more years or another year of homeless disabled veterans or any homeless people dying in the street. We can solve this. We can solve this. And we need to demand that people who represent us do so. I mean... I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's that's very okay. I th I think in a nutshell, you know, you don't need to wait five years. You don't need to wait two years. You could get something up in a week. You could you, 
You're, you're, you could yes. get something up by Monday if you had the give a damn. You're telling me yes. you couldn't send someone, hey, I need you to go over to this warehouse, pick up 100 porta potties. I need you to go over here and get one of these uh, these portable hand washing stations. I need you to, you know what? Some, however the case may be, you put the basic infrastructure, you fence in an acre, you put some security on there 24 hours, and you bring in veterans. You, you, you go through, you get their approval, you go through their paperwork, you determine, yes, you did serve in the U.S. military between these years and these years. Yes, you were eligible for treatment here. Yes, you were eligible to sleep here. If this is the, if, if this is the situation that's best for you right now, here's a place, here's a door, here's a lock, and here's a security guard at the entrance of this place. You're going to sleep well, son. You're going to sleep well, daughter. You can finally relax for a minute. By the way, tomorrow, if you want to, only if you want to, you can come in here and we can uh, get you to see a few doctors to kind of, you know, walk you through some of the things going on. That's something we could do on Monday if we had to give a damn. So we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Rose Webster, thank you so much for joining us today. We will be talking again soon. I appreciate My your time. Pleasure. Nice to meet you, Brian. Indeed. To be continued. Check yeah. out her work. The, the article is, is very great. All the information in that petition is fantastic. Thank you, Rose. And for everybody out there in the TNAM radio network, I want to say thank you for checking out this program. More is on the way. 2016 is going to be a great year. I appreciate you. I love you. We'll talk again soon. Peace. Yeah. Well, what the hell? This song was in the playlist. It fits the mood. How you feel about the VA? Alright, we'll see you later, guys. Alright. Hi, everybody. You're listening to Agree to Disagree with Brian Engelman. And this is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy, and not only is the New American Media dot com a very cool platform but here's a cool idea for you too are you alone not really do you like dogs do you like cats you do of course you do everybody does one or the other maybe even both you know there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now and if somebody doesn't take them home they're going to wind up euthanized that's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed because there's simply not enough room i guarantee it the best dogs and the best cats the best pets come from shelters there's something about dogs and cats they know they know where they are you walk through one of them and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go i wish you'd take me home i'm in hell please take me out of here it'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul you'll feel good about it and not only that but you have a friend for life doesn't matter if you got money you don't have money what well, doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat all they need is the sound of your voice and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.